let me show you how you can get conversions and sales with your Google Ads campaigns, even if you're operating on a very small budget. If you've come to this video asking the question, can I run a Google Ads campaign on $5 a day or $10 a day? The reality is, is that that is actually the wrong question to ask. And that's all gonna make sense really, really soon as I take you through the five critical steps or questions that you need to get right so that you can see success with Google Ads even if you're operating on a tiny budget. And that's the starting point we're gonna start with is that what is the minimal budget that you can use for success with Google Ads? Now, as I said at the start, asking the question of can I run Google Ads on a $5 a day budget or a $10 a day budget is the wrong question. And the reason for why that is the wrong question because it all comes down to what is the average CPC for your individual niche or if you're from America, niche that you are operating in. And essentially what you wanna be doing is you wanna be working backwards from this core stat. And that is that at a bare minimum, you wanna be getting at least 10 clicks a day for your search or your shopping campaigns. So the formula of what is the smallest budget that you can operate in for your individual business really comes down to what is the average CPC, multiply it by 10 and then that gives you the answer. So if your CPC is $1.50 a day, you need to start with a budget of $15 a day. Whereas if your CPC is at 50 cents, you can get away with a $5 a day budget However, if your CPC is at $5, your daily starting budget really needs to be at $50 a day or higher. Now, why is that 10 clicks per day such an important metric? The reason for that is because to see success with Google Ads, you wanna be able to operate in this mode, which I call the Google Ads success loop. And what the Google Ads success loop is, is that you are starting your campaigns, waiting to see some initial data, you're then making optimizations off that data, then you're waiting again to see the new round of data so that you can then make further optimizations so that you can see greater success with Google Ads. And it's just a continuing process that goes on and on and on. And the reason for that is because for success with Google Ads, it's not just about setting up a campaign and pushing people through to your website because you also need to be getting high converting ads and have a high converting landing page and a high converting offer. And sometimes you don't get that right right at the start. So that's why you need to get all these pieces together right. And then once you're starting to get those conversions through, that's when you can start to scale your budget. And that becomes really, really hard to do if you're not getting at least 10 clicks a day, which then gives you about 300 visits to your website every given month. And on top of that, you're seeing around about 2,000, 3,000, depending on what your click-through ratio is, but you're seeing that many impressions of your ads. So you're starting to get enough data so that you can then review your ad copies and really start to see what happens when you're sending people through to your website. And so that we can keep going on in this video to really help you with your optimizations for your Google Ads campaign is that I wanna give you access to my Google Ads optimization checklist. And this not only takes you through the list of all of the different optimizations you need to complete inside of your Google Ads campaigns, but it also gives you a template of how often these optimizations need to be made. And if you do wanna find out about how to find out the CPC for your individual business area, what I do want you to do, if you stick around to the end of this video, I am gonna show you where you can watch a full training right here on YouTube, which takes you through how to complete your keyword research for your business. So after that first step of setting your budget right, it now comes to that second point, which is using the right type of Google Ads campaign. Now, my dad was actually an electrician and he used to always have this saying, which was you need to use the right tool for the right job. And that very much speaks true for Google Ads as well. At the time of recording this video, there are seven core campaigns that you can use to promote your business for Google Ads. And it's highly likely that you won't need all of those campaigns. And it really comes down to using the right campaign type, not only for your business, but also based off the current results that you're seeing inside of your Google Ads account. And for the vast majority of businesses, this is gonna mean that you're gonna be starting with a search campaign. And the reason for why you wanna be starting with a search campaign is because you can then go through, do your keyword research, Research. Remember, watch the end of this video where I'll show you how to complete that keyword research. And then that way you can target specific searches that people who want to book your services or buy your products are currently searching. And then you can write ad copy to get people to click on your ads and send them to your website. So it's the most simple process to really take people through. If you're an e-commerce brand, on top of that, you would likely also add a shopping campaign, which fundamentally works in the same way, except rather than adding in that keyword targeting, the targeting is grabbed in for your product titles, but people would see those search results when they complete a targeted search. And the reason for why most businesses would start here is because this is gonna give you the most amount of information. So you can start seeing what keywords convert, 
what keywords don't convert, what ad copies convert, what product images convert. Once they go into your landing page, you know, what information do you need on your landing page and what is the right offer in order to get those final conversions. Google is doing a heavy push with new campaigns like Performance Max. And I'm not saying these campaigns are bad. In fact, they're a campaign type that I highly recommend. But you've got to remember with Performance Max campaigns are built to generate more conversions from what is already converting in your account. If you're worried with your starting budget, what you really, really want to make sure is that you are focusing and having the most amount of control over where Google is spending your money until you start to see those conversions. Then when you get some conversions coming in, you've got more money to spend, you can then reinvest that back into Google Ads and start using some of those secondary campaigns like Performance Max. All right, now that brings us to step number three. And step number three is all about focusing on those easiest wins. And what I mean by that is rather than targeting all of your different products and all of your different services, you might only target in terms of your advertising inside of Google Ads, one or two key keyword themes, services or products. And these are the keyword themes, services or products, which you know are gonna be the most likely to convert. And also the ones that are most likely to convert in the shortest turnaround time possible. If you've got a limited budget inside of Google Ads, you might have some really high value products or services, but you know there may be a longer acquisition window. So it may take people, you know, 60 or 90 days in order to make that decision. So what I do recommend, especially if you're starting with Google Ads, you really, really focus on the services or products or keyword themes, which are gonna convert in the short amount of time and they're generally your cheaper products or cheaper services that your company or business provides and also target the areas or the locations which you know are once again going to be the easiest to convert a perfect example of this is let's just say that you are a local service provider rather than targeting your whole city you might just want to target some really key specific suburbs which you know are most likely to book your service or if you're an e-commerce brand rather than targeting the whole country you might just target specific states states or cities within your targeted country that once again, you know are gonna be most likely to convert. And what you're looking at doing here is you're really, really looking at focusing on those core easy wins so that you can then generate more money for your business so that you can then reinvest that back into your business. And this is why I recommend that for most businesses, you'll start with a search campaign or if you're an e-commerce brand, you'll start with a combination of search and shopping because that gives you the most targeting options to really drill down into the specific keywords or products when it comes to your keyword targeting. And let's now jump into a screen share so I can show you how we put together a plan like this for a business who is operating on a really small budget. Now in this example, I'm gonna show you, this was for a local service provider and they were providing air conditioner cleaning and also pest control. And what they were also doing is they were doing it in different areas. So they had four different areas around this state and they had three main services, air conditioning, pest control, and also smoke alarm services. And they had these in all of these areas. Now when we did our keyword research, we could see straight away that the least expensive services to offer were air conditioning and pest control and the smoke alarm services were just way too expensive and what we did from here is that we then broke this down into the different locations and you can see through here for Brisbane we only started with focusing on air conditioning cleaning because this had a top page bid of $2.71 whereas for pest control they had a top of page bid of $7. Same was true for the Gold Coast. Their conditioning cleaning service had a top of page bid of $3 versus $8 for pest control. Same as well in another area, which was Ipswich, which is once again, half the price. But then it did flip for another area within the Sunshine Coast where it was cheaper to actually target the pest control. Now, what we did in that situation is we used those lower price services to generate the phone calls and then their in-house sales team were able to had that opportunity to upsell them to those other services. But what we did, because this business had a limited budget to start with, we wanted to put as much volume as possible into those lower cost services so that we could then at least generate phone calls and then just rely on the in-house call team in order to upgrade those products that we didn't initially target and were able to successfully generate business for those other services without even targeting them in Google Ads. And that's just a perfect example of of how you can outwork this strategy with a small budget. And don't feel like you've got to target all of your products and all of your services, but look to be really, really strategic with how are you gonna be able to best spend your limited budget 
in order to get inquiries, which you can then upsell them with your sales team or when you're on site and working with that client or customer. With the core principle really being here is take the time once you've done that keyword research to really put through a strategy and really looking at how can you get the most traffic or high quality traffic to your website for the lowest possible cost. And this brings us to point number four, which is all about being super aggressive with your ad copy. And what you wanna do here is it's all about having a core understanding of how Google Ads works. Remembering that with Google Ads, you only pay once someone clicks on your ad. So what you wanna do is you wanna stop any unnecessary clicks which you know are not going to convert. And the way that you do this is that you be really, really clear in your ad copy about who your service or who your product is not for. So what you're wanting to do here is you're actually wanting to discourage someone from clicking on your ad if you know they're not going to convert. And the easiest way that you can go through and do this is to actually add in a price confirmation of how much your service costs. Also be really, really clear about your limitations, so what you can and what you can't do. And what this does is this really helps to target the ad copy on who your product is best suited for. This is one of the earliest lessons I learned on the very first campaign that I was running for my own business, which was for a villa resort, which was based in Bali. And our specific product, was was situated in a target area where there was a lot of different categories for people to stay. There were family villas and there were low priced villas and high priced villa, but because we were a higher priced villa and we were only also specifically set up to cater for couples as our main core market, we ran that with our ad copy and where we not only stated that it was for couples, but we also added in our baseline price. And what that did is it filtered out a lot of people who were never gonna book our hotel because we were just too expensive for their price range. With that example I gave you before about that business who was doing pest control and also air conditioning cleaning, they didn't deal with ducted aircon. They only dealt with split system air conditioning services. So once again, in our ad copy, we called that out and made sure that the ad copy was very, very clear that their cleaning services were only for split system air conditioners. So what I also want you to think about is how you can filter out and potentially stop people from clicking on your ads if they're not suited to your product or service. And the best way of doing that is by adding those restrictions inside of your ad copy. And if you've already downloaded my Google Ads optimization checklist, you'll also know another great way of doing this is by adding in those negative keywords, which you can add into your search and your shopping campaigns to filter out non-targeted or non-relevant searches. And the last core key about having success with Google Ads with a small budget is that you do need to have clear expectations about when you're likely to see results with Google Ads. And then I do really, really get this, is that you know you can start a Google Ads campaign today and you can start seeing your ads appear today, but sometimes you don't get conversions you know, over those first couple of weeks. And I've got lots of cases where we've started a campaign in the morning and people started to get conversions already in the afternoon, but sometimes it does take two or three weeks in order to get some conversions for Google Ads. And to further explain this, let me take you through what your campaign could potentially look like over the first 90 days of starting a Google Ads campaign. So this is the type of results that we really look to get you to think about when you're starting a new Google Ads campaign. And what you really want to frame this as is over the first 90 days, what your goal is, is your goal is to find out keywords that convert, ad copies that convert, and also landing pages that convert. And it's really, really important to know here that you don't want Google Ads to be like a last chance how Mary pass if your business is about to completely fail. You can't just say, well, let's just try a Google Ads campaign. You want to be setting your budget, at level where you know that you've got time three to four months at least to in order to be able to get this campaign profitable because what you're generally going to be seeing is especially over the first 14 days there's not that many optimizations that you can do in google ads yes you can add in some extra negative keywords but really we need to wait until that 30 day period where we can start looking at what ad copies are working we would start having enough data about your landing pages to see whether that is working also some different audiences we then make our first round of optimizations and then we need to allow that data to go through. So we're waiting for an extra second round of testing. And then we go through at the 60 day mark, review the data and start that third round of testing. And what you really, really be looking at, and this is at a very rough guide, obviously, as I've mentioned, we generally see much better results in this, but at a bare minimum, if you can be looking at that over this first 30 day period, you can start to get some converting sales or converting leads. Then through this second period, the days from days 31 through to 60, if you can start to have some profitable weeks, and then if you can make this third month to be profitable, you are then in a really, really good position for success with Google Ads. And as a recap, these are the five things that you need to do in order to see success with a limited budget inside of Google Ads. Firstly, remember you need to set that starting budget based on the data 
getting at least 10 clicks per day. You then need to make sure that you're using the right types of campaigns. In most cases, that'll mean starting with search or a combination of search and shopping. You then need to focus your spending or your Google Ads budget on those easy wins. So not only the services or the products, but also the locations which you feel most confident will convert. Then remember to be really, really strategic with your ad copy and really use your ad copy as a tool to filter out people who are not likely to convert adding in those price call outs, adding in those limitations of your products or services. And then finally, remember the optimization cycle with Google Ads. Remember, it's all about building a longer term framework for success where you're reviewing the data, making optimizations, then waiting to review that data again. And remember, if you wanna use my Google Ads optimization checklist, which has had well over 100,000 downloads, and the reason for why it's been so popular is because it's easy to use and it gives you a step-by-step -step framework in how to optimize your Google Ads campaigns. And we've only just updated it for 2025. So if you wanna get that, follow the link in the description below. As promised, if you wanna go through and watch that video on how to complete your keyword research in 2025, go through and watch this video right here. Hey, as always, thanks for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. I look forward to seeing you in this video right now. See you guys.